larger light truck and performance tires. Other prices start at $19.99. Hurry, this sale ends soon. Back at Surfers Paradise on board with stuff on your hands. And uh, Saturday, beginning at 1, noon central on ABC Sports, the USA women's basketball team faces a crucial test as they take on the college all-stars. Then, we'll go to Pennsylvania for some arena-style bowling at the flagship Open and on ABC's Wide World of Sports. It's the dance competition from the NutraSuite World Challenge of Champions, plus the Santa Anita Derby presented by Visa. That's all Saturday here on ABC Sports. So, quite a bit has happened here in the last few laps. We're on the 44th lap of 65. Uh, we've had a swapping of uh, positions at the front of the field, Vassar. Uh, coming into a stop early because he was short-fueled on the previous stop. Pruitt took over the lead and then came in under a full-course caution. And when he did that, uh, all up and down the pits, there was Bedlam, several cars going out of the race, but most notably, Brian Herta pulling away, still attached to the fuel tank and actually pulling it over the wall. Thank goodness no one was hurt as a result of that. Jimmy Vassar is back in the lead, followed by Pruitt, Greg Moore, Raul Boisel, and Eddie Lawson as we go green once again. Two wheels to four, and Eddie Lawson's right there. That's great to see. So Jimmy Vassar with the leaders all close on him. Here comes Pruitt. There comes Moore. Our old boy Sal driving for Team Green, sitting in fourth place. So Jimmy Vassar, and, and the indication, too, is that Scott Pruitt is now short shifting and being very careful about his fuel. Now you also saw Al Unser Jr. and Jill DeBaron who were running third and fourth at the time get tangled up. And they were able to get restarted, but obviously that put them well down in the field. Unser Jr. sitting now in uh, 14th position and DeBaron fared a little better. He came out of that confrontation in eighth place. Mauricio Guzman trying an interesting line down the inside. Boy, he gets them all locked up right there, but that's for that's position. He was passing Eddie Lawson there. Look at this. Yeah, but look at this. It's Fangio, Fangio on the outside. And Gilles DeFerrin gets through. Oh, There's some racing going on. Last lap. Laps have been exciting. There's been a lot going on. Very tight circuit here. You have to be careful, but as the race goes on, you, you get just a, a little bit more desperate, and that seems to be what's happening here. Vassar in front, still unchallenged, followed by Pruitt Moore. Here on board, Andre Rivero right now. He runs 11th place. Let's just ride with him and listen to the ships. of these shows, Deb Luganbuehl, who is down uh, with pneumonia, a uh, complication of that flu that Danny mentioned earlier that seemed to be going around here. And when we left the hospital, it was not possible to get a cab because everything was so busy over at the circuit. All the cabs were tied up there. So we're standing on a corner with the idea of walking back to the hotel, the three, four mile walk, when one of the, one of the locals pulls up and says, hey, you guys need a ride? And all seven of us, piled into his into his car. He goes back through the race traffic all the way to the Marriott Hotel. I'll tell you what, that tells you exactly who the Australians are. Let's go to Jan Vikas. Well, Paul, there's some big news coming out of pit lane right now. First of all, Scott Pruitt. We talked about Scott coming in. We wondered why did he wait one lap and not come in at the usual time right when the pace car comes out. Well, according to Pat Patrick, he said if we would have come in one lap earlier, we couldn't have made it on fuel, which means Scott Pruitt now can make it to the end of the race. So we quickly then checked in with Greg Moore's crew. 
Steve Chalice said, we can also make it on fuel. And said, well, we better check on Vassar. And according to Tom Anderson, Jimmy Vassar, even though he came in much earlier than the others, is not expected again on pit road. Well, Jan, something just to add to that was, of course, during that, was that Jimmy Vassar snuck into the pit lane and I think topped it off a couple laps after he had been in earlier. Yep, he was down there at the end of the pits at the same time that uh, everything was going crazy up in Brian Herta's pit. And, of course, something that will happen here is, of course, we see right there is Scott Crook with Greg Moore right behind him. So it's going to come down to whose car is handling a little better, who's getting a good fuel mount. Scott may want to run a conservative race, but not if he's going to lose a spot to Greg Moore. Don't forget, they're battling for that championship as well. Going back through the uh, stories at the start of the race here and that winning combination, well, it still appears to be uh, the Reynard Honda Firestone, but Scott Pruitt is out to disprove that. Then the rookies of the race, Zanardi with his problem, but Greg Moore with a terrific run, bringing him up into third place behind Scott Pruitt right now. Championship points, well, the battle is still right there at the front of the field. The two guys tied in points coming into this race, Jimmy Vassar and Scott Pruitt. And the toll of the track, well, you've seen that visually, not only on the track, but in the pits. And another guy being reported out now, Robbie Gordon on Vegas. That's right, Paul. Robbie Gordon now makes his way to pit lane like so many drivers. Boy, this is a tough day on machinery. What put you out? Um, some kind of crank trigger. Um, we, we, got, we got a really bad misfire. You know, we had a great game plan going. We started 14th, and we just wanted to stay clean. And guys were running into each other. And, you know, we were slowly creeping up to the front. You know, we were, I think we were fifth, and we, um, you know, if we wouldn't have had to stop, sit and stop here with Ray Hall going out. But, you know, it's unfortunate. We just wanted to gain some points today and, and, and go on to Long Beach and go after this championship. We've got a lot of work to do. Certainly been a tough start of the season for Walker Racing. I know you, I, and everyone also want to wish Scott Goodyear a quick recovery back home. On board with Jimmy Vassar, still the leader of the race, out in front by 3.1 seconds. And Carlos Guerrero into the barrier. And that looks like a precarious position that may in fact bring out another yellow flag, Danny. Yeah, you can look right there at those back tires. You can see the flat spot right on the back tire where he got it all locked up. Boom, boom, right there. I think his day's over. And they've gone to the full course caution once again. It's still Jimmy Vassar, then Scott Pruitt, Greg Moore, Raul Boisel, and Mauricio Guzelman at the top of the order, followed by DeFerrin, Christian Fittipaldi, Eddie Lawson, Johansson, and the guy in the accident, Carlos Guerrero. One of the signatures of uh, Australia, the koala and his uh, ever-present eucalyptus leaves. A nocturnal animal napping during the day. We'll be back after more to these messages and a word from our ABC station. I get here early to stock up on Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil because it gives my engine complete protection. Me too. Michael Andretti. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility and fight vaporization. And it's the same oil used by championship racing teams. Empty. Tough track, huh? And more life to your car. Take it to the star. It's available 183 horsepower engine. The all-new Forerunner is so rugged, it can take you far from civilization. Which is ironic when you consider that with its immense, well-appointed interior. Civilization is never all that far away. The all-new Forerunner from Toyota. ABC Tuesday, a parent's worst fear, losing a child. I don't want to die, Dad. You never know whose family it will happen to. I know you're scared, you know, I know how you feel. An episode so powerful, it hits home. We beat this thing, no matter what it is, you know. I'm not letting anything happen to you. A special home improvement, followed by the Diet Mug Root Beer, Dana Carvey Show, all new ABC Tuesday. ABC Wednesday, it's the new comedy that's got people talking. I don't remember talking to myself, although it's possible considering the amount of stress I was under. A new faculty, ABC Wednesday. At Honda, we don't think a car that's affordable and exceptional is too much to ask for. After all, the Accord has carved out a nice niche being exactly that. 
And now with 3.9% APR financing for up to 48 months, its affordability is more clear cut than ever. In fact, it's an offer so solid, it's carved in stone. Get 3.9% APR financing for 48 months on any Accord. Room 518 wants to give a speech that brings his company back to life. Good morning. I had a speech written, but I think it's better I speak to you from my heart. Marriott, when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Channel 7 Eyewitness News, where the news comes first. The Australian Grand Prix continues. Back at Surfers Paradise as the green flag comes out again. Vassar, Pruitt, Moore, Raul Boisel, Mauricio Guzman, and Jill DeFerrin has moved into sixth place up three positions in just the last couple of laps. You can see them all right together there. They're in race order on the track. Yeah, and that, that yellow really helped him. He was moving through the field, picked up a few spots, but that yellow helped him a lot. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, one of the great stories unfolding here in Australia concerns Jimmy Vassar. You know, Vassar comes from the Seattle area, and his mother, Roxanne Collins, has not seen him race at all in 1996. And the last time she saw him race was back when he won, what, three hours later in Portland, Oregon, and had it taken away. Well, his mother has flown all the way down under. This is the first race she's seen. Roxanne is sitting in a suite sponsored by Honda, watching her son not only take the pole, but now lead in this IndyCar Grand Prix. Jimmy Vassar, is he possibly looking at the second victory of his career, the second of this season, the first repeat winner of the season? He won at Miami on the oval there, now on the very first road course, a temporary circuit on the streets of Surfer's Paradise. But you can see that both Greg Moore and Scott Pruitt have closed in just a bit, then Raul Boisel and Mauricio Guzman are back about 100 yards. They come back onto the pit straight again. We continue to watch Vassar and Pruitt at the front of the field. You'll remember the run two weeks ago at Rio and Mark Blundell and that crash. Well, he's with Jan Vikas. That's right, Paul. And we had hoped that we might see Mark Blundell in a race car, but no, he's not in a race car. He's in the timing stand. Now, Mark, a very bad crash for you. We thought we might see you driving here, but there was more serious injury than we thought. Yeah, it's a very poor accident for me. Uh, unfortunately, I had three fractures in my foot, not just one. And my lungs and ribs collided, and all the cartilage muscle on the rib cage was stretched out of place. Now, we've just had a chance to look at the replay. Have you watched that yourself? Have you now had a chance to see how horrifying that crash was? I watched it two times. I turned off the TV. I don't want to see it anymore. That was a horrifying crash, and you had high praise for these Indy cars taking that kind of impact. Oh, fantastic. I mean, I, I thank the guys at Reynard. What a great car. I mean, uh, I'm lucky to be alive. 200 mile an hour incident, that was a big one. Now you're in a cast now. When might we see you back in a race car? Honestly and realistically, I think maybe uh, Nazareth. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss out the two road circuits here and uh, Long Beach. All right, well, I know Ovals may not be the first place to start, but we look forward to seeing it in Nazareth. Glad to see that he is only wearing a cast after that one. Boy, I don't like to see that at all. I've seen that a few more times than he has, but it still gives me chills when I watch that deal. Again, testimony, though, to the uh, rules makers on how they specify these cars will be built. That's true. You know, one thing I just noticed right here is that the restart, everybody's bunched up, and it seems like those three Firestone shot cars pull away a little bit from that group of Goodyear shot cars right behind them. Exactly one of the things, in fact, Jack Root mentioned it at the beginning of the race here, but we're also seeing the battle with uh, the relative power units and chassis, especially the uh, the Renard, the Honda Power, the Firestone tires here at the front, but right behind them, you're looking at uh, an entirely different situation with Scott Pruitt, the uh, Ford Power, different chassis. That's right, but one thing that we cannot see from the booth or from the pits or any place is what's really going on with those guys in terms of the fuel. Don't forget they're trying to manage their fuel.